Usually, when it comes to playing games, I prefer to play a shooting game or strategy game. But after playing it by a mutant, I want to play something new. What is the next game that I want to talk about in my next video? YouTube is a good place to find a new game. And after spending one hour searching for a game, my interest landed on Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I think everyone by now already knew who is Sherlock Holmes. And if you don't know, you probably live under the rock. But the title of the game is Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Why Chapter 1 you might ask? Because according to Wikipedia, students best place to get their homework done fast. The game is set as an origin story with Sherlock Holmes being age 21 returning to the island of Cordona where he spent a part of his childhood. The main plot revolves around Holmes slowly regaining memories of his mother's death while also solving different cases on the island. At a glance, the game have a beautiful art, the characters look diverse, and the building look historic. It felt like watching an old British film. You know what comes to my mind when I play this game? Assassin's Creed. The only difference is, in Assassin's Creed, I flatline enemies with weapon, while in this game, I solve cases to progress in the story. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. I played in PC, so there are three keys that you must familiar with as fast as possible. C for casebook, Q for concentration, and Z for Analyze surroundings. Casebook is where Sherlock Holmes stores his evidence. It is like your own personal notepad, so whenever you need information about the case you want to solve, press C. Concentration is when whenever you see this image, that means you need to walk closer until the information pop up. It is then followed by Sherlock Holmes explaining about the information that appeared. There is also a time when you need to use concentration to sort of visualizing of what happened in the crime scene. And lastly, analyze surrounding. This is for whenever you go to an area like a room or crime scene or maybe even a new place. Let's just say that you have a feeling that the place have a hidden clues. Pressing Z will reveal the clues in that area for you to gather information. During the time when you're gathering information, you will see this icon pop up. This is called Mind Palace. And what you do in Mind Palace is to connect all the information that you have gathered and match it with the right one will open up a new idea about the case. And if you succeed to collect all the clues needed, you will end up like this. Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. Then I grabbed her throat. You'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. Get your hands off me! Making a conclusion in this game is quite a challenging task. It is because whenever you need to accuse someone or have to pick between two choices like this, Without realize, you will constantly thinking, please be right, please be right. And when you get it right, you felt happy and relieved. Well, when you didn't get it right, you felt a bit disappointed. My tips are this. If you didn't get it right on the first time, you can either restart it from your save file if you don't mind, or just continue on play the game because by continuing this game, you are not wasting time and you finish this game faster. Plus, it added the feeling of realness when playing this game as the nature of this game is solving case. But if your nature is a perfectionist, you can always play this game for the second time after you finish, no problem. If you able to completely gather all the information, you will end up having two or three outcomes. If you only end up with one outcome and conclusion inside that outcome does satisfy your choice, no problem. But when you have two or three outcomes, you will start to think, what should I choose? As an example, I will use the second case from the main story. 
The cast is called the Gilded Cage. A brief reminder, I will only scratch the surface of the case and will not go into deep so that if any of you interested to play this game, you will still able to play this game without knowing too much information about this particular case. For those who already played this game, you know what I mean. This is Sherlock Holmes together with his imaginary friend John. Are you all right? And this unlucky person is Theodore Gilden. He is trampled by an elephant named Goliath and it ran away. This is Theodore's daughter. Her name is Imogen Gilden. This is Imogen Gilden's romantic partner, you lose your Paul a woman are you who disguises herself the as a man. And no lastly, this is Arthur Swift, an that, archaeologist. Long story short, you managed to collect all the clues for this case. I could accuse Arthur Swift, the archaeologist, because you are guilty, Mr. Swift. I have the evidence that showed he has a dispute with Theodore Gilden over the location where he put all his dedication and hard work to find an archaeological treasure. He could have killed Theodore Gilden because Theodore Gilden could replace Atasu's project for his own project. Or Paul Perks. I could accuse her too. Did it feel good you see, Paul Perks, as mentioned earlier, was a romantic relationship with Morgan Gilden. But Theodore doesn't approve their relationship. Imogen's no, father, Theodore, is a rich businessman. If Gosh, Theodore died, mansion. who will inherit the fortune? Imogen, correct? There is a scene where Paul Perks somehow oh, interested in that fortune. Of what is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Ah, uh, come on. Of course she interested because she even planned an expensive trip. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gilden died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. And lastly, this big boy in this case. It is undeniable from the start that Goliath killed his owner. If I it pick this choice, Arthur Swift can continue his work in the mines while Paul Perks can live happily together with him again. But the guilt though. If execution and punishment doesn't suit you, there is another option. You could choose this option and you don't need to experience all of this. But rest the fun, because in this game, it gives me a joy to see this scene. I heard you can gamble on racing in prison, only it's rat racing. No yachts. Goodbye, Paul. So, now you know how decision making works in this game? It's more about what you want it to be, because the decision is in your hands. This game have a feature where if you want to collect information from someone, you have to disguise yourself in order to blend with them. For example, as you can see, I unable to get along with this person. The barracks are off limit to civilians. It is because I didn't disguise myself. Let me use my Q for concentration. Okay.
Now, watch after I disguise myself. You aren't here to relieve me from duty, are you? There you go. Now, I can cooperate oh, well. with this person and he is more willing to talk oh, well. with me. Another feature about this game that I think not that important but I like is chemical analysis. It is because I solved them all in the main story. It's somehow like a map but there is an option to skip if you don't like it. Gunfight is also a feature that included in this game but I prefer it more if the developer of this game just make it like stealth style because Whenever gunfight happen, no matter how hard you try to hide, they can still see you. Dodge. So, even if I tried to run or hide behind this wooden barrel, it's futile. They can still see me and kill me. But, Far Cry for example, if you are well hidden, you can kill the enemy without they knowing where you are. Up you until feel? now, if you notice, I only talk about the mechanic of the game and I didn't touch the story aspect of the game. It is because if you play this game, I assured you, you will regret if you know the story before you play this game. Why? Because the story development for this game is well arranged, at least in my opinion. And the choice of the musical style played in the background while you're playing this game give a good nuance. I mean, it just fit with the theme of this game. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. So, there you have it. I hope it's somehow informative for anyone who want to try this game. How could anyone resist? Yeah, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. That deserves a slap. And then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend.